Here are two amplifier circuits. The one on the left you've probably all seen before. This is just your classic STK type hybrid stereo amplifier circuit. And the one on the right is a little bit more obscure. This one is a BC power module, model SVI1302. Now, as you can see, they have both been taken apart. The one on the left was blown, so I ripped off the cover to take a look inside. And the one on the right, well, I took it out of the amplifier that it was originally a part of, and the cover just fell off. Aside from that, the circuit on the right is actually still fully functional. So, these circuits are not integrated circuits. These are hybrid circuits. What does that mean? Well, it basically means these are just standard circuits, except they've been made a lot smaller. But the production techniques remain the same as they are for regular circuits on printed circuit boards. So, the one on the left, the STK circuit, as you can clearly see, it is based on circuit board material. We do have all the copper traces, you can clearly see them. Just the components are a lot smaller than they would be on a regular circuit board. We do have these tiny ceramic capacitors. Those look pretty standard. The resistors are printed onto the circuit board with a carbon ink. This is a resistive ink and you can make pretty good resistors from that. And the transistors are all these tiny little dots all over the place. Except for these four. These are the output transistors. They are mounted to these aluminium blocks, which are connected straight to the back of the circuit, which of course is mounted to a heatsink. And these transistors are much bigger. It's basically the same idea on the circuit on the right, except the circuit on the right is about 10 years newer. This circuit, the STK circuit, is from the late 1970s. This circuit is from the late 1980s. And you can tell we do still have circuit board material, copper traces, but we now have surface mount components, just standard surface mount components. We have capacitors, we have resistors, we still have the big output transistors along here, again mounted to aluminium blocks. But now we also have integrated circuits. There are two integrated circuits in this hybrid circuit. And this illustrates the difference. This whole thing is a hybrid circuit. This tiny little thing right there, just that little square, is an integrated circuit. Same thing right there, except you can't even make it out very well. There is an even smaller integrated circuit right there. Now, of course, we're now looking at this all from a bit of a distance. But, conveniently, I got a digital microscope for Christmas. So, let's switch to the digital microscope and get in real close. And here is the late 1970s STK circuit under the microscope. The microscope is zoomed as far out as it will go, and I can't even get this entire hybrid circuit. But as you can see, here we have the output transistors. Now, I should say this hybrid circuit has been without its cover for many years, so you can see already some of the bonding wires to these transistors are broken but that probably happened after I ripped off the cover. Also there is a lot of dust in here. But let's go ahead and zoom in a little bit closer to one of these output transistors.
And from now on, I will probably cut out all of the zooming and adjusting because it does take a while. And here we have a really close look at one of the output transistors. And what do we see? A black spot. The bonding wire is broken. Yep, this is probably the transistor that blew up. So this circuit is not working anymore. Now I can move around. Here is another one of the output transistors. And another one, and you can see the structure of these transistors quite well. These are, of course, planar transistors. They are flat, which explains the somewhat complicated structure. Let's keep on looking around. Let's move to over here. Well, that, of course, is one of the ceramic capacitors. Now, that is one of the biggest components in this hybrid circuit. Let's move along and here is one of the resistors and as I said, as you can certainly see, this is really just some ink that has been printed on and it is quite dusty. And you've already seen them here are the transistors. These are just standard transistors except they don't have their usual black case. Let's try to get in a bit closer and there we go. Again we can see the structure on those planar transistors. We can see the bonding wires and they have all been secured into place with a little drop of well, probably epoxy, something like that. Now, obviously, you wouldn't want to leave these in free air. That would hurt them. Well, here is an interesting transistor. That is a very interesting structure on that one. I have now moved over to the other channel. So again, here is a giant ceramic capacitor and all these tiny transistors. Also, right there is a very small value resistor. You can see the traces are pretty close to each other, but there is some carbon ink printed across them. And I think that's it for the late 1970s hybrid circuit, and quite appropriate for the season, this transistor almost looks like it had a sort of a Christmas tree structure on it. And here we have the late 1980s hybrid circuit. The microscope is zoomed out as far as it will go. And as you can see, here we have the output transistors. And those all look fine. Let's get in closer. And here we have one of the output transistors close up. You can see the bonding wires. The structure on this, I would say, looks somewhat simpler than on the output transistors of the late 1970s circuit. Here is the next one. These are also covered in epoxy, and as you can see, this one has an air bubble enclosed. And this one has one too. And there is output transistor number four, which has two air bubbles. Let's keep on looking. And over here, we can see just standard surface mount components. This is a resistor. It even has a value printed on, 104. That's a 10 and four zeros, so that is what, 100 kilo ohms, I think. Probably making a fool out of myself right now. This one is a capacitor. All the beige ones are capacitors. This is kind of an odd value. 5.36 kilo ohms. And here we have a 4.7 kilo ohm resistor. So these resistors, these capacitors are all 
just standard components. You can also find them on regular circuit boards. But this is where it gets interesting. This is the integrated circuit. There it is. This is about as close as I can get with the optical part of this microscope, but it also has a digital zoom, so let's try that. Oh yes, that, uh, well, maybe zoom out a little bit. Don't want too much noise in the picture, but there is the integrated circuit. And this, as you can clearly see, is a lot more abstract than anything we've seen up until now. But we can make out some structures. We have transistors. These are small transistors. Up along here we have what looks like capacitors. And then we also have some more powerful, some larger transistors. You can always tell by the surface area that they take up. You can see all the bonding wires and you can see all the pads for the bonding wires are numbered. So there is the first integrated circuit. And we do have a second one. Let's get this one centered and use the digital zoom. Well. That's, that's a lot of digital zoom, but I guess you can still tell there is a structure on this as well, as well as a number. I'm seeing what looks like a part number. Let's turn this around and uh, right there it says AN7074. So we can look up this part. But there it is, that is the late 1980s hybrid circuit with two integrated circuits as part of it. And that's it, a really close look at two hybrid amplifier circuits. Thank you for watching.